So this is the start of part number six of my dual turntable repair video. Um, yesterday I ended with the uh, tone arm mechanism uh, lift problem. Um, I already um, uh, succeeded in uh, getting it right more or less. Uh, I didn't film that but uh, I adjusted a few things with the counterweight. Um, someone on the final engine forum said I still have to remove even more grease and he said he gave me some instructions on how to easily remove the uh, uh, cam wheel. Uh, I've got a new cleaning product. Well, it's really uh, um, it, it's not uh, it, it's, a, it's a sort of um, benzene product. In Dutch it's called wasbenzine wash benzene. It's used for uh, cleaning uh, brushes, uh, paint brushes mainly and it's used as lighter fluid and I wonder if it's plastic safe. I think it is because this is not thinner. It, it is not a product that contains um, any um, toluene or uh, xylene or benzene. It's not like that uh, because I know those uh, kinds of uh, products can <laughs> pretty much dissolve plastic and from what I know this stuff does not. Um, this product is used for uh, thinning of uh, synthetic uh, paints, oil paints, uh, cleaning of uh, paint brushes and um, removing stains from different products and it can be used as a degreaser for mostly metals, so I'm going to give this a try. Of course I'm going to use it very sparingly. Um, well, and of course I can always, uh, I also always use this product. This is uh, Contact IPA. This is isopropanol alcohol. It's a very safe product. This is pure alcohol. It's only D... Um, well, how do you call it? They they made it undrinkable, but it's uh, it's extremely safe to to use on uh, plastics and such. I also use it on uh, cleaning electrical contacts, mostly uh, cleaning Nintendo cartridges where they have dirty contacts. This stuff is excellent for that, and uh, a lot of commercial final record cleaners also contain this ingredient. So it is uh, an extremely safe product. So, um, uh, I was instructed that you can remove the uh, cam wheel by undoing uh, a little nut. Uh, well, it's on the other side. And this screw and this uh, bolt, uh, this one is a bit difficult to reach. And I have to remove this C-clip and of course this thing. Uh, as you can see, the C-clip is still uh, not reattached there. <laughs> I did that deliberately because... Uh, then I can easily uh, get this thing in and out. So hopefully it's uh, going to be a little bit easier. And of course I have to, this is mostly no note to myself, mind this little spring here. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a pain in the ass to reinstall or not. So I'll have to take some patience. And of course I'm going to clean up these things even further. And when it's all finished I will uh, simply use the alcohol and clean the rest of the chassis and the platter so that it looks uh, in pristine condition again. So I have removed the bolts and the nut has been removed. I've got those parts here in this small cup. Uh, I decided to remove this again. Um, first I wanted to remove this but I quickly realized it was still better to simply remove the C-clip a lot more convenient in the end. Um, anyway, uh, removing the spring here is a bit fiddly. I think reattaching it may still be a little bit more difficult. Uh, anyway, when it comes to tools, there's very little accessibility here, so I had to use this. I didn't even realize that I had this part in my uh, toolbox. You know, normally I only use those small screwdrivers and this, and well, I've never used this. So, the first thing that came to mind was using this spanner, but 
get you know getting the spanner in here is no problem but getting there no can do so well you have to use one of those things <laughs> so now it's time to get it out I hope I have removed enough things uh, so this will be fiddly well do, there do you have it Bob's your uncle I've got this thing out check it out here it is the kurvenrad or the cam wheel that's how it looks like Whoa, the underside is very uh, nice and clean actually and very translucent uh, there's one thing you have uh, I have to take in mind when I reinstall it is to put it in the right way again oh you see it's very slippery and slidey but here a magnificent <laughs> cam wheel let's give this baby a good clean oh my dad is uh, listening to his uh, Dr. Greer uh, videos again I hear so I hope it doesn't uh, pick up on the camera though so let's give it a clean so I removed the grease from the cam wheel at least most of it uh, there's only one area I couldn't really get into and that's about here but I'll just leave it there and of course this little crevice I'll just leave that in place and now I'm going to reapply a little bit of lubrication but only a very small amount um, that's I think the hardest part getting just enough in there and not too much um, I have uh, I think the tiny little bit of lubrication on this guide pin uh, may do the job I'm not sure but I think that could or might actually well be enough grease to make this thing work fine anyway I uh, will put a little bit of grease in the guide channels uh, but the tricky bit is just to uh, put a very tiny amount in there well and then I'll see how it goes So if you're wondering why am I seeing almost no difference, it looks clean, well, I've applied a very thin coat of lubricant. This is what I used, uh, I dipped it in about three times in the uh, grease over here. The, uh, this is the lithium grease. Um, let me look at the English universal lithium based grease suitable to lubricate most types of bearings and also several different lubrication purposes with very good wear qualities under extreme conditions Litap grease EP2 here are some uh, instructions and specifications uh, this is a uh, Dutch brand uh, it's made the company is uh, in, uh, in my local area as a matter of fact it's not too far away from where I live uh, I bought it at an automotive supply store that's close to my work uh, almost uh, well on the other side of the street and they only had this stuff so the uh, lubricant has been reapplied let's see if I can get it right on the camera you can see it's shining a little bit and there's a very oh, I'm doing this with a, a, f a smartphone camera so it's I have to do this with one hand so it's a bit difficult but let's see see I only applied a very thin coat now uh, I hope this should uh, do the trick I'll reassemble it and then I'll give it a test uh, run so everything has been reassembled I already gave it a quick test spin uh, at first it didn't work but after a few turns of the mechanism it started working at first I thought oh, maybe I shouldn't have taken the cam wheel apart but uh, well you have to spin it a few times and then it uh, everything starts to fall back in its place and works again 
So last thing to focus on is uh, the arm. It sort of works, uh, but I need to adjust a few things and then I think I can clean it up and call it a day. So I have uh, reinstalled the platter. I first have cleaned uh, the chassis and the platter with a bit of uh, cleaning product. Uh, before I reinstall the C-clip of the uh, platter I'll demonstrate what happens now. You see the arm doesn't come off. Well it tries to but it needs a little bit help. You see. I need to readjust the arm. Hit stop. It is too low at the moment. Oh, needs a little bit help. Don't worry about that. I have uh, the stylus protected with a stylus guard. Um, the uh, 1891 cartridge came with a uh, uh, thing to protect the stylus. As you can see, there is a plastic cap on there, so nothing happens. Nothing bad can happen with that stylus when I'm doing this. <laughs> By the way, it's a very cheap cartridge. Um, they're pretty uh, expendable, but they're great for this type of turntable. Um, they, they do the job fine and uh, well now I need to figure out why the arm doesn't come up first it didn't come down now it doesn't go up mm. there's a pattern very funny I wish this was the conclusion of my repair project but unfortunately not there are two um, remaining issues when I lift this thing up you see the uh, mushroom thing doesn't stick there don't know why but the biggest problem is um, I think the piston and the rebalancing because if I remove the counterweight the uh, tone arm completely drops like a brick like this and well when I let go it does that and even when the uh, I remove the counterweight and put it back on and it's almost in a position that it's about to fall off it pops up it and, and well I've tried uh, working with the anti-skating and the tracking force so those are being set correctly for this cartridge but I think um, something about this piston mechanism is dodgy and I've uh, heard or seen on another YouTube video from pit phase 1, 2, 3 that if you have to re, uh, repair this part you're in big trouble <laughs> because you have to disassemble the bloody tone arm and, and, and get new silicon oil in there and he said it was really difficult to do that and well that's it really uh, that's the end of the video uh, I thank you for watching and well, if I am able to repair it or to get that part sorted, there will be a follow-up. And, uh, well, that's it. Thanks for watching.